imagine, if you will, that you are having a nightmare. And in this nightmare, your spouse or significant other is killed and they're taken from you. Now, you wake up from this nightmare in a cold sweat and you find yourself in a graveyard and you're in front of the gravestone of your spouse. You came here, you remember coming here, but you didn't come here just to visit their grave. In fact, you, you reach out your hands and you mutter a spell and as you finish your spell, a small white orb forms from the mist and drops onto the fresh dirt that is in front of, in front of their gravestone. You reach out, you grab this white orb and you put it in your bag and you look around yourself and you see that you are in a churchyard. There's a church an old broken down chapel and you're surrounded by this fence and these gates and you start to explore and as you explore you you go into the chapel and you find a secret a secret hidden pathway and in this hidden pathway you go to this underground area and there is a summoning circle and in this summoning circle, it's surrounded by these candles and you take out your white orb that you got and you're able to use it to light each individual candle. You light them one at a time and the summoning circle lights up and you walk into it and you cast another spell and you summon a demon from the void. And this demon, it bonds to... The little white orb that you have. After you do this, you find a key and you leave the chapel and you unlock the gate that is at the that is surrounding the chapel. There's a fence surrounding the chapel, and you unlock that gate and you leave, and there's a forest trail. And on this forest trail, you're walking along it, there's trees, you see a gate, another gate, only this gateway is a void gate. It's kind of this giant portal and you walk into it and it transports you to a dark and uh, maze-like area. And in this area, there are these pools, void pools. And in, when you walk in them, um, you can feel a presence watching you. And the longer that you're in the pool, the more prominent this presence is until you're attacked by a demon. A demon summons or a demon forms from the pool and attacks you. You use your demon to fight, fight it off. And as you battle, as you run into these other demons, your demon grows stronger. Um, it levels up and gets stronger. But its health is getting lower and lower, and you eventually get hit by a really powerful attack that, that causes your demon to start bleeding. And you almost lose all your health, and you almost lose your demon, but you don't you're not quite, you use a bandage to cure the bleeding and you use an elixir that you have to, to heal your demon. And you reach the end of this, this void area and there's another gateway. And you walk through that gateway and you enter into a small farm town. And this small farm town has an altar in the center of town. There's some rundown buildings. Um, and you come up to this altar and you, you use the altar to refill your elixir uh, so that your elixir is full again and your demon is completely healed and you're ready for your next adventure. The story that I just told you is the user story uh, for what I would like the next demo for Demon Lock to be like. 
a user story is just a story that you can, as a designer, you can describe to somebody else. And it describes the experience that you want your users to have, or maybe one of the experiences that you want your users to have. Uh, depending on the game, there might be multiple experiences that they could have. And I think these user stories are the kind of thing that make video games interesting, and particularly um, the, a lot of the most successful indie games that I've seen uh, have great user stories. You're able to tell your friends about your experience with the game in a way that is meaningful and interesting to them. So this, well, a couple weeks ago after the last devlog, I wrote up the user story and I planned out the features that I wanted in the Trello. Here it is in the Trello. You can see it's not exactly like the story I told you. Um, I wrote this out and then I figured out exactly what features that I needed for this. I stuck them up on my calendar, uh, added these features to the calendar, certain things that I need to be working in order to get that. I've still got a few more features that I need to add to this calendar. I need to plan out the next couple of weeks. But it really helped me to figure out what was necessary for, for the experience that I wanted the users to have in the demo. And I'm quite happy with the work that I've made so far. So I'm going to share some of the things that I've done. The very first feature that I needed to add was a simple inventory system. And you can see that, let me move my mouse there. You can see that I've got this key, I've got this orb here, and uh, I've implemented a simple inventory system. I'm following the First, for scope reasons and also for design reasons, I'm keeping the inventory quite small and the item list will be small as well. It fits with the, the horror game trope where you generally have a limited inventory. Whether or not it's going to be four is yet to be seen. Uh, I'll kind of get a feel for what I think is the right number to make um, inventory management something you have to consider but also not something that is just impossible. And so you can see I can, I can uh, have a simple inventory and use items. I use that key to actually open that gate. Now the next feature that I needed to add was the summoning circle because I needed that. And while I haven't placed it in a secret place yet, it's right out in the open, we can actually go through and light each of these candles here. And once they're all lit, I came up with a kind of a trigger system and that lights up the circle there. So once all the other candles are lit, it triggers a signal and sends it out to this um, that it should activate. And now I can activate this and summon my first demon. There we go, and I have, I've been working, that's kind of the first iteration of the animation for it, but I'm pretty happy with how that turned out so far. So another feature that I added was the void. And so um, you can see also these tile sets are kind of placeholder. The, we've got these rough looking tree tile sets, uh, but we can come over here, more placeholder art, you can see. We can enter the void and um, while it is randomly generated and uses the random level generation stuff that I had, uh, kind of the plan that I want for the game is handcrafted areas that are connected with randomly generated levels. And those, those generated levels or paths, I should say, between the handcrafted areas will be um, consistent per game. So if you start a new game, um, the pathway connecting two areas together will be different from the last game. But um, if you go back to a pathway that you've already been in, it won't generate a new one. It will be the same one that you encountered the first time you went between those two areas. So you can see I've got this working. I've got the avoid working. It doesn't look good yet. This is all a lot of this is placeholder, including the positioning of the void pools. Um, but I do have that working. 
we can encounter a battle you can see and so here's kind of the last two features that i added number one being that uh demons actually have a, a super attack now so let's um defend my demon here and you can see each time a demon attacks what happens is it uh, fills up this little meter i'm gonna move my mouse so we can see it down here it fills up this little meter and once this meter is full the demon will use a super attack and uh, that is designed to add some variation to the battles and also uh, well i may change that actually to instead of doing a super attack they may actually evolve um, depending on what item you have equipped to them uh, and then they'll be evolved for that many turns as well. So, you know, if it takes three attacks to charge it, then they evolve up into a more powerful form, and then they get three attacks in their more powerful form, and it reduces them back down. And the idea behind that is to encourage you to swap demons and trade them around, depending on how close they are to e uh, evolving and powering up, or how close they are to powering back down again. So. They're going to be a resource that you're going to be managing. So I also added a, as kind of a last minute feature, uh, I added the ability to change demons. So you can see I can select this and I can select from a list of demons. And this is placeholder as well, a lot of this stuff. Um, but I can swap to um, this demon here. And now I've got this demon out. And it actually doesn't have a charge meter yet. I didn't give it a super attack, so it just doesn't show anything there. But yeah, this is currently, this was kind of a last minute feature. Anybody who's watching this video who is interested in this game think it's, thinks it looks cool, check out the Kickstarter and click the notify me on launch button. That would help me a ton. And I appreciate everybody who has done that so far. I also have a Godot course if you're interested in learning about making your own games and you can check that out in the description as well. If you watch this video to the end, I just want to say thank you so much for your support. I appreciate everyone who watches these devlogs, who enjoys them and learns something from them. I hope they're useful to you. If you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a like and uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions for me. And I will talk to you all later.